All right, my dear friends, now it's time for us to discuss the optimized way of doing this. See, now what has happened is because there were loops within a loop, our time complexity was big O of n square. Now, I am telling you that there is a way in which this big O of n square can be made into big O of n. Now, how do we do that? First of all, nesting of loop should not be there. That is the concept here. Okay, sir, how do we optimize it? Listen to me and listen to me carefully, okay? Now, this was the array of heights which were given to you and this is that elevation map and this is the water which is being trapped inside. Anyways, what was happening is that for every, so we know that the first bar can't trap water, we know the last bar can't trap water, hence from the second bar to the second last bar we were traversing. Now for every bar, for every bar, we were calculating which is the bar which, is, which has the highest height to its left, which is the bar which has the highest height to its right. This calculation we were doing for every bar. And then we found out whichever is the leftmost highest bar, rightmost highest bar, we found out the minimum between both, that will be the level of the water and then the level of the water minus the height of the bar gave you the amount of trapped water which we then added it to that result variable cumulatively, correct? But I am saying, why should I keep finding for every bar which is the leftmost highest bar, rightmost highest bar at that point? That is why when I am looping from here to here, inside that loop, for every value of i, I was finding out which is the right, uh, to its left which is the uh, highest bar, to its right which is the highest bar, then finding its minimum. What if I could first only before traversing this array, first only calculate and keep for every bar which is the leftmost highest bar, which is the rightmost highest bar, first only can I pre-calculate it and keep it ready. Will this help me? What do you mean sir, you may ask. Watch and understand carefully. What I will do is, this is that height array which I would like to call as A. Okay. What I will do is, I am going to now create two more arrays. Listen to me carefully, I am going to create two more arrays which is the same size of A. So, one new array I am just showing on top, another new array I am showing on bottom. I hope you are able to think. Now, this array I created to store for every value of i, for every bar here, for example, this is the 0th bar, which will be the leftmost highest bar for it? Which is the leftmost highest bar for this? Which is the leftmost highest bar for this? Leftmost, leftmost like that. Here I will store whichever is the leftmost highest bar. Similarly, in this new array which I created, I will be storing for every value in A, which is the rightmost highest bar. How are you able to think? How sir, you may ask. For example, let us take this bar of height 2. The leftmost highest bar is what? 4. Rightmost highest bar is what? 5. Which means here 4 should be stored, here 5, I am sorry, here 4 will be stored, here 5 will be stored. How are you able to understand? First only I will pre-calculate it and keep it. I will call this array as LB. I will call this array as A. Now how is this going to help us? We will notice it. First let's do this calculation. Okay, first and foremost what I will do is, let's fill up this LB array. Now what I will do is, we know that the first bar, whichever it is, its leftmost highest bar is itself only. This is the first bar. Its leftmost highest bar is itself only because this is the first bar. I hope you are able to think. So what I will do is, LB of 0. I will initialize it with a of 0. I will be able to understand. Simple. So a of 0, give it to lb of 0. If I do that, lb is going to get 4. I hope you are able to understand. And yes, for this, the high, leftmost highest bar is itself only. Correct. Now what I will do is, I have to calculate for this from the second element till the last element, which is the leftmost highest bar for each element. So see, I will run a loop where I will tell for i begins from second element and goes to the end length of a. Now inside this how will you calculate sir? Very simple. Now I want to calculate for this bar of height 2 which is the leftmost highest bar. Very simple. All I will do is I will take its value and I will compare it with the leftmost highest bar to its left side. And how will you do that sir? Very simple. In LB array, you have in left side which is the highest bar. So all you have to do is compare this with this. How are you able to think? 
if this value is lesser than this value then even for this value this is only the leftmost highest bar look at this this bar height is 2 I compared it with the leftmost highest bar on this side which is 4 2 is lesser than 4 means still 4 is only the leftmost highest bar for 2 simple as that but if 2 was greater if 2 was greater then the 2 only would have been the leftmost highest bar I would be able to think so I will compare this and see which is the maximum between both whichever is the maximum between both that I will store it here I will be able to understand so say I will come inside and tell find the max of a of i and here I want this value how will you find this value see if i is here you are comparing i minus 1 in this array previous position so compare max of a of i comma lb of i minus 1 I am showing you see that is only i minus 1 compare both which is maximum this only then that is only going to be lb of i I need to store it here if this is i minus 1 this is only i lb of i which means even here it is 4 and correct even for this bar also leftmost highest bar is 4 only for this bar also leftmost highest bar is 4 only correct similarly now i moves forward if i moves forward now for the zeroth bar see for the zeroth bar to its left which is the highest bar you want to calculate all you have to do is compare this with the previous value in lb now be able to think that's all you have to do compare this with the previous value in lb find out whichever is maximum that only will be the leftmost highest bar and if i compare 0 and 4 even here if you see to the left 4 only is the highest which means 4 only should be here so max of 0 and 4 is 4 store that in lb of i I will be able to think. If I do that, here also 4. I will be able to understand. Similarly, next i moves forward. If i moves forward, now for this bar of height 3, bar of height 3, which is the leftmost highest bar, don't have to do anything. Just compare a of i with lb of i minus 1. So I am showing, see, this is only lb of i minus 1. I will be able to understand. If I compare lb of i minus 1, then one can clearly notice that. 4 and 3 max is again 4 only which means even for 3 leftmost highest bar is 4 only so max between both store in lb of i if this is i minus 1 this is only i so here also it is 4 now we able to understand yes sir we understood what else what else means move i forward check for 2 which is the leftmost highest bar just check this with the previous element here i minus 1 if I check that 4 and 2 max is 4 only, store that in this. So which means here also it is 4 only. Now we able to understand. Then move i forward. If I move i forward, then 5 and 4. This is only i minus 1. This is only i minus 1. How we able to think. Which means 4 and 5 if I compare, highest is 5. If that is the case, then here leftmost highest bar for this is nothing but itself. I hope you are able to understand. Which means here I should be getting the value as 5. And that way first bar and last bar really do not matter. Because first bar does not store water, last bar does not store water. But for every, from the second till the second last, did you find for every bar, which is the leftmost highest bar? Yes, for this also 4, for this also 4, for this also 4, for this also 4. Did you see it's populated with all 4s? So first only, before calculating the trapped water, I already know what is the leftmost uh, highest bar. Similarly, I want to calculate rightmost highest bar. How will you do that? Now, if you understood this, this is very, very easy. All you have to do is, so this is already populated. I'm showing you. Now, I'll come to the rightmost highest bar. First and foremost, we know that the last bar, that, uh, you know, for the last bar, the rightmost highest bar is itself only. This is the last bar. Rightmost highest bar is itself only because it is the last bar. So, what I will do is, whatever is the last bar's height whatever is the last bar's height as it is i will store it in rb's last index so whichever is the last bar here store that here because whatever its height is the rightmost highest bar is itself only so initialize that so see a of a of last index you want 
length of a minus 1 is only last index. So, a of length of a minus 1. Assign that, assign that to Rb's last index. How will you assign it? Rb and a's size is the same only. So, Rb of length of a minus 1 is last index only. So, whatever is there in a's last index, store it in Rb's last index. Great. Any confusion till here? Now, what I want to do is, starting from the second last element, till the last element I want to go. And for every element I want to find, which is the rightmost highest bar, rightmost highest bar, rightmost highest bar, rightmost highest bar and store it inside this array. Did you understand? So, I'll create, I'll run a loop which starts from the second last element. I starts from here. Should go till 0, which means for I, second last element if you want, how will you write? Length of a minus 1 minus 2. So, length of a minus 2. To 0, it should go. Correct? Inside that, what should we do? Now, very simple guys. For this bar, you want to find which is the highest bar to its right side. All you have to do is check A of I and check RB of I plus 1. Would you agree? I plus 1. This is only I plus 1. How are you able to think? Compare both. Whichever is maximum, that is only the rightmost highest bar. So, if I compare 2 and 5, obviously 5 is greater. So, 5 is only the rightmost highest bar. But imagine this was 7, this was 5. If I compared 7 and 5, then the rightmost highest bar for it is itself 7, which means I would have stored 7 here. But it is 5. I hope you are able to think. So, see, max of A of i, comma Rb of i plus 1. Whichever is maximum, store that here. Uh, here means how will you get? i is here, same position you must store. So, Rb of i. Any confusion till there? That's what I'm saying. Assign it to Rb of i. I hope you are able to understand. And hence, we are going to get the value here as 5 only. I hope you are able to think. Next, i minus minus i moves backwards. Again for 3, which is the rightmost highest bar. Very simple. Don't have to do anything. The previous element, that is i plus 1 in Rb. Check i and i plus 1 in R. 3 and 5, which is maximum? 5 only. Which means for 3, if 5, if between 3 and 5, 5 is maximum, means 5 is only the rightmost highest bar. So, take that max, store it here. Which means you will get the value as 5. Similarly, i moves backward and this is i plus 1. Again, compare 0 and 5. Obviously, maximum is 5. So, for this also, 5 is only the rightmost highest bar i moves backward, this is i plus 1, 2 and 5 you compare, again 5 is only the greater one, so store it here. Again you compare 4 and 5, 5 is only the greater one, store it here. In other words, what are you saying? For bar of height 4, rightmost highest bar is 5, correct? Bar of height 2 also 5 only, bar of height 0 also 5 only, 3 also 5 only, 2 also 5 only and last bar itself. Any confusion till this point of time? I hope everybody have been able to understand. Sir, so I have two arrays. I have three arrays now. A was given to me. LB I created, RB I created. What is the advantage you may ask? Watch it. Now, all I have to do is, all I have to do is, now I will run a loop on this heights array, this array A. I'll run a loop. If in case I run a loop, one thing that you can clearly notice is that we have to find how much water each bar is trapping. We know first bar won't trap water, last bar won't trap water. Which means we must iterate from second element to second last element. So, I will tell for i starting from 1, so i is here, to length of a minus 1 means, uh, you know, uh, second last element. Any confusion till here? I will go till there and then what I have to do here is very, very simple. Inside this, I want to calculate now for 2, how much water is being trapped by 2. Now, to find out how much water is being trapped, first I have to find the level of the water. How will you find the level of the water? Very simple. To the left side, whichever was the highest bar, and the right side, whichever was the highest bar, I should find the minimum between both. Whichever is the bar with the lesser height, till there only water will get filled. That is my water level. That minus this height will give me the trapped water. Now, how will I find this water level? Very simple. For bar of height 2, I have already calculated the leftmost highest bar. I have already calculated the rightmost highest bar. Which means all I really have to do is like this. Watch it. 
this is only i this is only i just one second i is here also this is also i only so i i i okay we'll think what level you want very simple find the minimum find the minimum between lb of i and rb of i whichever is minimum that is only your water level so see minimum of lb of i rb of i will give you water level you found the water level level of the water minus this height of the bar will give you the trapped water so minus height is inside which are a a of i how are you able to think so do you understand the advantage of pre computing the height of the left most and right most bar simple find the minimum of lb of i rb of i will give me the level of the water minus the height will give me the trapped water now ultimately we have to store it in result so i will tell result equal to old value of result plus trapped water that is the same any confusion then i moves forward now for the zeroth bar for the zeroth bar what will be the level of the water very simple minimum of lb and rb which is the minimum between uh, between 4 and 5 obviously it is 4 see water is still this level 4 only that minus the height height is 0 correct that will give me the trap water add it to result i moves forward again for this height where what will be the water level minimum of lb and rb so in this case also it will be 4 only 4 minus 3 means one unit of water will be stored add that to result move forward this is the last one 4 and 5 any confusion now what is the minimum between 4 and 5 4 which means the level of the water will be 4 only minus the height which is 2 and that will be my what uh, trapped water add that to result finally result will have the total trapped water stored now how is this advantages how will this bring down the time complexity you may ask that i will show you but first let's write the code all right it's time for us to now use this approach so basically now what i will do inside this is i need to create one lb array rb array so i'll tell new int and i'll tell the size of the array is the same as a so a dot length now i'll give it a reference i'll first put semicolon then i'll just give it a reference i'll call this reference as lb now lb has to be of type integer array that's it now i'll copy that line paste it again and i'll just change that to rb so basically we have created two new arrays any confusion now first let's populate lb so first and foremost you know one more line space now in this lb the first element that is for this four the leftmost highest bar will be itself so i'll tell lb of 0 is equal to lb of 0 is equal to and i will give it as uh, a of 0 so whatever is there i'll just assign it good next i'll come down and i'll run a loop over a so i'll tell for int i starting from 0 to i less than a dot length minus 1 so that it goes to the second last element i'm sorry it's not i equal to 0 we have to start from the second element because first element we already initialized so i should start from second element go to the second last element yeah i'll come in, uh, in i plus plus so when you tell i less than a dot length minus 1 it will go to the second last element okay now inside this all you have to do is now find the for now for this element you are trying to find which is the leftmost very simple compare this and this so a of i lb of i minus 1 you should compare whichever is maximum that you must initialize in lb of i would you agree so how will you write that i'll use a built in function to find max so i'll tell math class is there inside that there is a function called as max and uh, inside that i will just pass uh, a of i i mean yeah a of i and lb of i minus 1 lb of i minus 1 Okay, so whichever is maximum, it will return that I will store it in LB of I. Any confusion? So this is how it happens. Now I'll just copy this entire code, paste it again, so that for RB also we should do the same thing only. Now I'll change this to A of A of zero. I will change that to. now you know first of all whatever is the last element that should only come here because rightmost highest bar is the same for the last element so a of length of a a dot length minus 1 is the last index 
whatever is there in the last index that I will store it in RB of last index as well. So, a dot length minus 1. Okay, good. Now, I will come here and all you have to do is find a of i and rb of. Okay, oh, one second. Before that, the looping, you know the looping should start from second last element, go till the last element, correct? Here, it should start from second last element, go till the last element. How will you do that? For i equal to a dot length minus 2 will give me the second last element. Now, i less than equal to 0, I will make it as. I will make it as i minus minus, so that it should go backwards. Yeah. Now, find the max between i and a of i and rb of i plus 1. That is how you have to find out. So, I will make it as rb of i plus 1. That I will store it in rb of i. That's it. So, this will give me lb and rb. Now, come down. Now, all you have to do is, now you have to run a loop on your array A. So, I will just tell for int i starting from the second element which means 1 and go till the second last element which means uh, i less than a dot length minus 1 and i plus plus if I tell then I will come inside this and all you have to now do is find the trapped water. So, see here I will put a comment. And I will just tell Tw is my trapped water is equal to is equal to means why, why wait, 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 remove all that Tw equal to not literally translate what I am saying ok Tw is equal to water level WL ok minus minus what height height I hope you are think now this how to find out simple I will come down and I will tell uh, and ultimately you have to store it in result isn't it so see what i will do is result is equal to old value of result uh, plus now this tw is what you have to calculate now tw first you need water level water level is what for example you are calculating for the second part water level will be minimum between left lb of i and rb of i right so leave space and i will tell math dot min min function I will call it m i n and inside of that I will just pass uh, a l b of i comma r b of i and r b of i. I hope I am clear till here. So, this will give me water level minus height a height is there in a of i. So, minus a of i this will only give you your trapped water semicolon is compulsory job any confusion till here. Okay, sir, great. So, that is it. Ultimately, delete all these extra lines. You will come outside this loop and return result. <clears throat> okay, fine. Good. Now, all you have to do is execute and see whether we will get the right answer. So, I will just execute it and if in case I execute, then one can you have got minus 7 which means something has gone wrong ok. Uh, what is the issue let us just see. So, the problem was very simple if you notice in this well filling rb you are starting from the second last element and you are supposed to go to the last element which means the condition should be a dot length minus 2 till not less than equal to 0 it should be greater than equal to 0 that was your main problem. Yeah, let us execute. Now, if in case I execute as per our expectation, we have got 9. Any confusion till here? Now, the only question is uh, how is this more efficient you may ask. I will just close this console. Now, watch it guys. What I want you to understand is I'll, you must see here there are 3 loops scroll on top, 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 little more down. Yeah, there are 3 loops. Any confusion? Loop number 1, loop number 2, loop number 3. Are these three loops inside each other? No, they are outside each other. Now, you know this loop, the time complexity is n. How are you able to think? This loop, second loop is also n. So, plus n because it can't be into, it is not inside. This loop is also n only. So, plus n. If I add them together, it is 3n. So, it is big O of 3n. Constants are not there in time complexity. 
which means what does your complexity come down to big O of n it was n square previously now it is n 100 percent we have improved it but problem is that space complexity has increased in the last approach it took more time but there was only one array in this approach you have created additional two arrays which means you have allocated more space or so space complexity has increased so in the last approach time complexity reduced but space complexity was same in this approach space complexity increased time complexity reduced i hope you are able to think now is there a way in which you can have this time complexity at the same time have the space complexity as the same without uh, you know allocating any extra arrays if you ask me it is definitely possible how is it possible let me show you alright my friends now I am going to explain to you how you can solve this problem with a time complexity of big O of n and the space complexity of big O of 1 which means no extra memory is going to be allocated now how is it possible my friends we are going to be using a very famous approach in arrays about which I have previously also spoken called as the two pointer approach now this two pointer approach will help us do it now this question I want you to first get into my mind and develop an intuition how am I looking at this problem because let us assume in a Google, Facebook, Amazon interview you are sitting and then the HR will ask you this question. So first you will tell them the naive, naive solution, the big O of n square solution. Then you will optimize it and tell him the big O of n solution. And finally when it comes to this big O of n solution without extra space, you have to first sort of explain your thinking. How did you arrive at this solution? That is very, very important. Okay. So now think along with me. Now what I am going to do guys is very simple. I am going to use two pointers. One called as L which will start from the beginning first element. One called as R which will uh, start at the ending. Okay. L's duty is to calculate the water trapped by the bar whichever it is pointing to. R's duty is also calculate the amount of water which is being trapped to whichever bar it is pointing to and they are going to use each other to help understand how to calculate the water which is being stored. Now, what do you mean sir, you may ask. If you look at the previous approach and the approach before that, the fundamental concept was, we found out the highest bar to the left side, we found out the highest bar to the right side and then the water level that can be trapped by a certain bar was always equal to whichever bar was minimum in height leftmost highest rightmost highest whichever was minimum that would be your water level water level once you find you subtracted the height of the bar from it and you got the answer i hope you're able to think the same concept i'm going to now implement it differently how you may ask what i will do is i'll create a variable called as lhb left highest bar i will initialize it with whatever is there as the first element i will make it as zero i will create another variable called as rhb and that is my right highest bar and i will initialize it with whatever is the last element that has been given to me which is one i hope you're able to think now how are we going to use this LHB RHB I will explain to you ultimately we have to have a variable called as result initial value is 0 and inside result you must have the total amount of water which has been trapped correct now first and foremost what I will do is tell me guys this is your LHB this is your RHB okay what were we doing we wanted to find the water level for any given bar water level was always equal to whichever is the minimum between both correct the same thing i am going to do watch it i will do if in case my left highest bar is less than or equal to my right highest bar then inside this if i know that the water level is going to be equal to lhb only simple because that is only minimum water will come till there only else means LHB was not less than equal to RHB was less than equal to LHB RHB was lesser 
If RHB was lesser, then I'll come to else and within else I know that the water level is going to be equal to RHB. Would you agree? Simple. Whichever is lesser, that only will be the water level. Great. Now, watch it. What I will do is, if in case LHB is less than equal to RHB, I know that the water level is going to be equal to LHB. But let's start iterating. Now look at this guys. L is 0, first element. Okay. Now tell me, can this store any water? No, because it is a first element. It is a first element. It cannot store any water. Similarly, the last bar also cannot store any water. This much has been established. But how I'm going to check that? It's not about first. Whatever condition I'm going to write is going to work for every bar. So the concept is, if a bar has to store some water, has to trap some water, then would you agree that its height should be lesser than the leftmost highest bar. If its height is not lesser than the leftmost highest bar, it cannot capture any water. I hope you're able to think. For example, this, uh, look at this. This is the bar, right? Now, its leftmost highest bar was this. Now tell me its, its, its height, is it greater than or lesser than the leftmost highest bar? It is lesser, it is greater. If it is greater, can it store any water? No. See, it can't store any water. So yes, for first thing you check this is LHB less than equal to RHB. So you know water level will be equal to LHB. But if that bar has to store any water, then that bar's height should be lesser than your leftmost highest bar. If it is greater, it can't store any water. And as a matter of fact, if it is greater, then that is the leftmost highest bar. Would you agree with me? So how will I check? If in case, if in case, A of L, A of L, if in case its value is greater than or equal to my leftmost highest bar, then I know it can't trap any water. Furthermore, I know that that is my leftmost highest bar. I hope you're able to think. So, look at this. Zero, is it greater than or equal to zero? Yes. Which means, can it store any water? No. And hence, that is only the leftmost highest bar. Sir, it's zero only, correct. Maybe for the first element, you will not get complete clarity. But here, you're able to understand it can't store any water. So if this condition is true, then whatever is there in A of L, I will update that as my LHB. So A of L, I'll assign it to LHB. It is zero only. Zero will be assigned. It is going to be zero itself. Any confusion till there? Now, if this condition was not true else, if this condition was not true, then it means my bar is lesser in height compared to my leftmost highest bar, which means it can trap water. And how much water it can trap? Apply the formula. You know what the formula is. Water level minus the height of the bar. That is your simple formula. Water level will always be given by LHB. Why? Because first only you checked. Is LHB less than equal to RHB? Because LHB is lesser only, you know that the water level will be equal to LHB. So you already found the water level. I hope you're able to understand. So what I will do is, Ultimately, I should store it in result. So I'll tell result equal to old value of result plus how much of water is trapped? LHB minus the height of the bar. In this case, A of L. How are able to think? Minus the height of the bar. And if you apply it, result is 0. 0 plus 0 minus 0 is nothing but 0. So result happens to be 0. Correct? So for this bar, how many units of water has it stored? 0. Result is 0 as of now. Great, now you calculated for this bar. Now you must move forward, which means L plus plus L is going to move forward. Are you able to think how I'm writing code? Again, again, I am within a loop. I'll write the loop later, but I'm within a loop. Again, I will check. Is my left highest bar greater or is my right highest bar greater? Because whichever is lesser will determine my water level. So what will I do? All I will do is I will go here and I will check if in case my LHB is lesser than or equal to RHB. What is LHB? 0. What is RHB? 1. LHB is lesser which means water level will be equal to LHB. Great. Which means I will come inside if I will not go to else. If I went to else, it means RHB is lesser and that will be my water level. But right now LHB is only lesser. Now, great. For this bar, if this bar has to store water, then there must be a bar to its left side which is greater than its height. 
But if this is this bar is greater in height than the leftmost bar, can it store any water? No. How will you check that? If in case a of l is greater than or equal to LHB. What is LHB? 0. What is this 1? Is it greater? Yes. Yes means it can't store any water. Furthermore, this is only the highest bar to its left as of now. I hope you are able to think. And hence, this condition is true. Update LHB with A of L. And if I update LHB, LHB is going to become 1. Any confusion till this point of time? Obviously, else will not execute. Hence, I will not update result, which means no water is being trapped. Correct. As of now, result is still 0 only. Now, we are able to think. Now, I am within a loop. Uh, I mean, L plus plus, I will tell, which means it will go forward. I am within a loop. Again, check. What can be the water level? Will the water level be equal to the left highest bar or right highest bar? That depends upon which is minimum between both. How will you check that? If in case, LHB is less than equal to RHB. Yes, it is not lesser, but is equal to, which means even now, the water level will reach up to LHB only. Come inside. We know water level is equal to LHB, but is, if this bar has to store water, then its height must be lesser than the left highest bar. Or there must be a bar on the left side which is higher than this bar. So if I check, is A of L greater than or equal to the left highest bar, will I get true or false? Left highest bar is 1. This is 0. Obviously, 0 is not greater than or equal to, which means 100% it can strap water. Uh, if this condition is false, come to else. And there, add, calculate the trapped water. How, how are you calculating the trapped water? You need water level. Water level will be equal to the left highest bar only because first only you check the condition. What is the left highest bar? 1. Water level is 1. Minus the height of the bar. Height of the bar is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. Add that to the previous value of result. 0 plus 1 is 1, which means result is going to become 1. Any confusion till here? Great. Again, L moves forward. L plus plus you have told. You are within a loop. Again, check. Is the left highest bar less greater, lesser than or equal to the right highest bar? Yes, it is not lesser, but is equal to, which means even now water level will always be equal to LHB. And correct, if you look at this elevation map also, water level must be equal to the LHB only. Correct. But now I am in this bar. Look at it carefully. Now I know water level will be equal to LHB. But can this bar trap water? You will say no. Why are you saying no? Because its height is greater than the left highest bar. That is why you are saying no. That is what I am also checking. Is A of L greater than the left highest bar? Left highest bar is 1, this is 2. It is greater. If it is greater, it can't store any water. So condition is true. I will not come to else. I am not going to store any water. But if this condition is true, this is the highest bar to the left. Please update that. A of L should become LHB. That is what I am telling. A of L should become LHB. And if I do that, A LHB is going to become 2. I hope you are able to understand. You are within a loop. Again, I mean, of course, L plus plus you will tell, which means L is going to move forward. And as of now, how many units of water has been stored? One unit. Look at result. It is one only. Correctly, it is working. You are within a loop. Again, check the water level of this bar. Will it be equal to the left highest bar or will it be equal to the right highest bar? How to check that? How to check that is just see if LHB is less than or equal to RHB. If LHB is lesser than RHB, water level is equal to LHB. If LHB is greater than or equal to RHB, water level is equal to RHB. Because whichever is minimum only, that will be the water level. If I check LHB is 2, RHB is 1. Condition is false. False means you will come to else. Now that I have come to the else part, you must understand something about this two-pointer approach. See, L or whichever index L is pointing to, how much water the bar can trap I will only and only calculate if in case this if condition satisfies. If I know the water level is going to be equal to the left highest bar, then only for the bar at position L I will calculate. But if I come to L's, then I am going to calculate for the right side. Now we are able to think. Because I know right highest bar is only going to be the water level. So from right side only I will calculate. Better, isn't it for me? So I will come here and now. R is here friends. Now look at it. Can this bar store water? You will say no. 
Why are you saying no? Because if this bar had to store water, there had to be a bar on its right hand side whose height was greater. But do you have anything on its right hand side whose height is greater? No. How are we going to check that conditionally? Just the way you check for left hand side, check here. If in case A of R is greater than or equal to the right highest bar, then it means it can't store water. And moreover, if its height is equal to or greater, then that is the right highest bar. How are you able to think? We have to update it. Same thing. Inside the cells, I'll again put if, I'll put else. Inside if, I will check if A of R is greater than or equal to RHB. If it is greater than or equal to RHB, A of R becomes my RHB. And if I do that, this is 1, I'll update it, it remains 1 only. If this condition was not true, it means there was a bar on the right hand side which was greater and it can store water and then I'll calculate the trapped water. But right now, forget about it, else I'm leaving it empty, let's not calculate it. But outside if else, now that I calculated for this, I should move R forward or backward? Anyone common sense will sir, it should move backwards. So, I will move R backwards. I hope you are able to think. Now, I am within a loop. Again, I will check. Whether I should find for L or whether I should find for R depends upon whether the water level will be equal to LHB or water level will be equal to RHB. How will I check which, where the water level will be? It depends upon which is higher, which is smaller, right? Or minimum between both. Hence, I will check if in case LHB is less than equal to RHB. What is LHB? 2. RHB is 1. Is it less than equal to? No. No means water level is going to be equal to RHB. That is the minimum. So come to else. If I come to else, should I calculate for L or should I calculate for R? Anyone in common sense will tell me, sir, R. So now let's calculate for R. Okay. Tell me, can this bar 2 trap any water? You will say no. Why? Because there is no bar to its right which is greater. Or in other words, this is the right highest bar. I hope you're able to think. So how will we check that? Very simple. If in case a of r is it greater than or equal to rhb yes 2 is greater than or equal to 1 which means it can't store any water so i'll not calculate how much trapped water but i'll update this as my right highest bar by telling a of r equal to rhb and if in case i do that rhb is going to become 2 i hope you're able to think yes sir great we understood till here next what you may ask next what means now you have to move r backwards because you already calculated for this it can't store any water now, if in case I move R backwards, R comes here. Did you understand till here? Now again, where should I calculate for L or should I calculate for R? Depends upon what. Again, you are within a loop. Check. Is LHB less than or equal to RHB? Yes, LHB is equal to RHB. Which means water level will be equal to LHB. Which means I am going to calculate for L. I hope you are able to think. Now, if I, have to, if I ask you how much water can this bar store, you will tell one unit. Why one unit? Because there is a bar to its left which is higher in size. In other words, this bar's height is not greater than the highest bar to its left. So, if I check the condition, is A of L greater than LHB, you will get false. False means come to else, calculate trapped water. How to calculate trapped water is water level, if you are in if, is equal to LHB. What is LHB? 2. 2 minus height, 1, is nothing but 1. 1 unit of water, that you add it to the old value of result, which means result is going to now become 2. How pretty everything? And correct, so far, 1, 2, 2 units of water only has been stored. L plus plus, which means L is going to move forward. How pretty everything? Again, check, will, will the water level be equal to LHB or RHB? If in case, is LHB less than or equal to RHB? Yes, it is equal to. Equal to means it will be equal to LHB. So come inside. Now, if this bar can, must store water, there must its height should be lesser than the LHB. So, if I check, if A of L is its height greater than LHB, no. No means I'll come to else and I'll calculate water trap. And how will you uh, calculate the water trap? First, you need water level. Water level will be equal to LHB, which is 2. And see, correct, 2 only. Minus the height. What is the height? 0. So, A of L, 0. If, uh, so, that, that is basically 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 plus old value of result, 2 plus 2 is 4. So, result is 4. 4 units of water has been stored. L plus plus, L moves forward. Now, I am checking here. Now, here, whether the water level will be equal to LHB or RHB depends upon our condition. If in case LHB is less than or equal to RHB. Yes, it is equal to, which means water level will be equal to LHB only. Hence, come inside. Is this height greater than your LHB? No. 
which means come to L's and calculate the trapped order. Trapped order is LHB is nothing but 2, minus height is nothing but 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 you add to the old value of result, 4 plus 1 is 5, hence result becomes 5. 5 units of water has been stored. Any confusion till here? L plus plus, L moves forward. Now watch it. I am coming here, I am within a loop. Now I am checking, is, in, if, is LHB le, uh, lesser than or equal to RHB? Yes, LHB is less than or equal to RHB as of now. Which means water level should be equal to LHB. So I will come inside here. Now tell me, look at this bar and tell me, can this bar store water? No. Why? Because its height is greater than the highest bar to its left, which is nothing but LHB. So if I check the condition, is A of L greater than your uh, LHB, you will get true. True means it can't store any water. Furthermore, this is the highest bar to its left. So update A of L as LHB, which means this is 3 and hence LHB is going to become 3. I hope you are able to think. Move L forward, L plus plus, L comes here. Now again check, is LHB less than equal to RHB? No. Which means water level, will it be equal to LHB or RHB? Always the minimum and minimum is RHB, which means I will come to else. If I come to else, I should now calculate water level for R. I hope you are able to think. Now tell me, can this bar store water? Yes. Why? Because its height is lesser than the right most bar. So if I check, if A of R, is it greater than RHB? Condition will be false. False means I will come to else. And if I come to else, it means I must now calculate how much water is trapped. How will you calculate how much water is trapped? You need water level. Water level is equal to RHB. What is RHB? 2. See, correct. Water level is equal to 2. Minus the height. Height is nothing but A of R. What is the height? 1. So if I subtract RHB minus A of R, I will get water level. That I will add it to the old value of result, update result. So see, result equal to old value of result plus water level is RHB minus height is A of R. Got it? So, what is uh, the water level here that it can store? 1 unit. 1 unit, if I update it to R, R is now going to become 6. Did you guys understand till here? R minus minus, R is now going to move backwards. L and R have now met. Doesn't matter. Now listen to me. Still, we have to, we have calculated for all the, these bars. We have calculated for all these bars. What is left is only this bar. L and R are both pointing to it. Great. Now, whether the water level will be equal to LHB or RHB depends on our condition. If in case, is LHB less than or equal to RHB? No. No means water level will be equal to RHB. I will come to else. Else means always calculate for R. And here whether you calculate for L and R will be same. But the way our code works is like this. We are calculating for R. Now, tell me, can this store any water friends? No. Why it can't store any water? Because its height is greater than or equal to the right highest bar. In fact, it is equal to. If it is greater or if it is equal to, it can't store any water. And that is what we are checking. If in case A of R, is it greater than or equal to RHB? Yes, A of R is 2, RHB is 2, it is equal. It can't store any water. Furthermore, this is the right highest bar. So I'll update A of R as RHB and RHB remains as 2 only because this is also 2, right? I can't, so I'll not come to else. I'll not find out how much water is trapped. R minus minus, if I do R minus minus, R comes to the left. For the first time ever, L has crossed R. If L has crossed R, what does it mean? That all the bars, you have calculated how much water is trapped. Because L started here, you calculated, 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 it came till here. R started from here, you calculated, 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 it came here. Now, if R goes this side, L goes that side, you have finished all the bars. Which means this looping should keep happening as long as L was less than R or equal to R. If it becomes greater than R, you should stop. And that is what I am telling. I will put this within a loop and I will tell. As long as means what? While L is less than or equal to R. That's it. Any confusion till here? Now, if you notice... There is only one loop moving from start till end. Of course, L is going here, R is going here, but you are going through all elements, which means N is, big O of N is the time complexity. Did I create any more arrays? No, which means space complexity is big O of 1, which means you found a solution where time complexity is big O of 1, space complex, sorry, time complexity is big O of N, 
and space complexity is big of 1 and this is the most optimized. Sir, can it be optimized even more sir? Not by me. If you can, you do it. This is the most optimization that you can do. So, just one array. Did you see what and all can be done with it? Did you see the different ways in which you can approach? And that is what your topmost product companies are looking for. Whether you can come up with innovative solutions for complex problems. And that is what this course is also aiming at teaching you. Yes, you can do it, right? Anyways, friends, I hope you enjoyed this particular program. Now let's go write code and implement. All right. So as you guys can notice, I have pasted the solution on lead code directly. So our test cases can be passed. And all we needed is the body of that function called as trap. So initially result is zero. The left highest bar, I'm assuming it to be the zeroth element initially. The right highest bar is the last element. So a dot length minus one. Then I need L and R. L begins from zeroth index. R begins from the last index. Then this is my loop as long as left is lesser than or equal to right. First I'm checking if in case the left highest boundary is less than or equal to the right highest boundary. If this condition is satisfied, then we know that the water level will be equal to the left highest boundary. So accordingly, I'll come inside. And inside that, I'm checking if in case A of L is greater than or equal to LHB, I will make that as, make that as LH. Right? So if it is greater than the left highest boundary, then the bar side is greater than the left highest bar. It can't trap any water. So I'll just make that as the left highest bar. Otherwise, calculate your result by telling result equal to old value plus water level minus height. And in the else part, I will do the same for R instead of L, where I'm checking if R is greater than or equal to RHB. If so, I'm making RHB as A of R. Otherwise, I'm calculating result. Here, L moves forward, R moves backward. Ultimately, outside the loop, I'm returning result. Okay. Now, if I first run the code, then it will pass some basic test cases. And if you notice, it has got accepted, where for this output had to be 6. And I think this is the same as this. Output is 6. Now, if I submit, it will pass many uh, test cases and you can just drag this a little bit here. So it is telling success runtime 1 milliseconds 89.96 percent of uh, faster than 89.96 percent right good great awesome so it works. Anyways guys I hope you enjoyed this program let's catch up in the next class with even more exciting programs till then take care.